one of the key components of disaster recovery and migration and frankly a lot of the DBA's uh, duties is to do backups and restores and it might not be because a production database is down it might be simply to restore the database to a development or a test environment and understanding how to do the restore and how to place and name the files is pretty important so we're going to run through an example actually we're going to do this twice I'm going to restore the Worldwide Imports database, and I'm going to do it again. But the second time I do it, I can't use the same database name, but I'm going to use the same file location. And we're going to walk through how to do that and why. So these are backup files that are downloaded from the Microsoft website, the AdventureWorks database and the Worldwide Importers. I've already downloaded these databases, so we're just going to go right into the Management Studio here right click on databases and go to restore database now if we had existing databases and we had existing backups you would see it listed here at the top but we don't have that so we're going to go to device click on the three buttons and go find our backup file And we're not going to do the data warehouse. We're going to do the worldwide importers, full backup. And as you can see in this screen, it gives you a little bit more information about when the database was backed up, the original file names, dates, the ID of the individual that ran the backup. What we're interested in is under the files we need to choose where these files go. We're going to click on relocate and in this example it already has the correct folder because it's the default but my WSSQL01 data folder is where I'm going to put the data file and then the log is going to go to the log folder. Now if you're restoring this from one instance or one server to another then this is not going to be the same. You're going to need to identify where these database files are going and make sure that there's enough space to restore them. You'll see down here that these are the actual file names. So our location is all set. We don't have an existing database. So this is how we're going to restore the world, wide world importers database. So instead of clicking OK, which is what would happen, it would restore the database. We're going to hit script. And I highly recommend any DBA to take a look at the actual code for many of these GUIs. If you get used to using the GUI too often and you lose track, It's good to look at and use the scripts as opposed to the GUIs, which are very convenient, but they don't offer as many options as the scripting language does. So we can see from here we're using the master database, and then we're restoring. This is the database name. This is where we're restoring it to. And these move statements, this is where they're moving the file quotation fingers the file uh, to the destination location you'll notice that there's two names there's an internal name and then there's the actual file name now right here I can change the file name I can change the database name but I cannot change the internal name this name can be changed when the database is live when it's online but I can't do it now. I have to actually restore it first before I can do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to restore a second copy to the same location. Now this is an example where somebody says I dropped a table, I broke something, deleted records, and I need to copy those records back from a previous backup, maybe the previous day. You may be restoring the same database from the day before, let's say, maybe as something like temp. So the database needs to be restored to the same instance so they can copy records back and forth between the tables 
and it needs to go to the same folder, let's say, so you can't use the same names. So you can't use the same names. In this example, I'm just adding temp. So in order for this restore to work, I have to go down here to the file names, and I usually just use the same thing. The file name is temp, so I just add underscore temp to the end of it, and leave the rest of the file names the same. So this allows me to restore two databases. It's the same backup, but there's two copies of the database. They go to the same folders and the same instance. Let's try running this. The messages below shows the restore process and the quote upgrade. If we go over to the left and refresh the databases tree, we see that there are two databases have been restored. Normally what I do when a database is restored, I'll go into the properties and I'll make sure that the primary user or primary, I'll make sure that the primary owner is SA and then set any of the max growth size depending on the database. Set the growth and the max sizes for each file so that way the database doesn't outgrow the path of the full. So that way the database doesn't outgrow the space that's on that drive. You can also go to options and you'll have the option for recovery model, full or simple, and the compatibility. In this case, it's a 2016. I'm going to choose 2019 and do the same thing for the temp database. I'm going to leave that simple as well. So to restore just one database from a backup file, you would only need to follow through with the first part. Or you can use the GUI, the same method I did in the first part. I wanted to show that using the script allows you to see that there's other options. You can do the same thing in the GUI as well. You could change the file names, the destination names, etc. Uh, but as a DBA, you should be familiar with this script. Uh, please leave some comments and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.